young man then in grief who had just lost his, his wife and daughter in a car crash and had two young sons. And now we see all these years later, the president uh, elect, the, the soon to be first lady, Vice President elect Kamala Harris, who will make history in more ways than one today, and the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, as they now enter the building where they walk in as President and Vice President elect, but will walk out as the new President and Vice President of the United States. Joe Biden spent a lot of time in, in that building as a member of Congress, and, uh, and of course, as, as Vice President as well. Uh, Andrew Mitchell, I want to get your thoughts. Again, juxtaposing what you're looking at now as opposed to what we looked at two weeks ago today. Well, that is the stark contrast. Uh, I don't ever recall this happening because usually they come in through the Capitol and come out at the top of the steps. They are right on the podium. But walking up those steps where the Capitol was breached, that's where the first access to the Capitol uh, took place on January 6th. I think that was a symbolic greeting by Senators Klobuchar and Blunt, who were the two chairs, the leaders, bipartisan of the Rules Committee, which is traditionally done, and now they're coming into the Capitol together up the steps, both the Bidens and the Harrises. They did not, of course, have the greeting at the White House that would have normally taken place between the president-elect, his spouse, and of course, the outgoing and president. Andrea. So that's why this is so different. I just was told uh, in my ear by our producer that uh, Eugene Goodman, the Capitol Police officer escorting Vice President-elect Harris, is uh, some will recognize from and her own actions that day uh, as the insurrectionists and rioters broke into the Capitol. He was the officer who, uh, in a moment of great uh, poise, led them in a different direction away from an open door to the Senate chamber. And in that moment, many has said perhaps uh, saved untold lives. Uh, and, and who knows what could have happened but for his heroism. And he, of course, is getting a place of honor today. Well, Savannah, in fact, they are voting to give him the Congressional Gold Medal for that bravery and for the brilliance, really, of his quick decision-making. Recall that he was uh, drawing them up the top, up to the top of the second floor, the, the steps there, and on that landing of the second floor, he quickly spotted that if they had turned to the left, they would have been 100 feet from where Vice President Pence and his family were then being uh, secluded by the, by the Secret Service, having just been taken off the podium of the Senate chamber just minutes before. Instead, he drew them to the right and saved any interaction or confrontation between the Vice President and the Secret Service, of course, and the on oncoming mob. So it was it was just incredibly heroic. All right, Andrea, thank you. Uh, let's, let's go to uh, Hallie Jackson right now. Hallie, uh, uh, again, putting into perspective all this, uh, your yeah. thoughts. I'm struck by a couple of things, Lester. How many times has Joe Biden walked into this Capitol building over the course of his career, over the course of his many decades of public service? Thousands upon thousands of times, but never like this. Uh, and same goes for Vice President-elect Harris, for that matter as well, who served in this chamber. This is a moment for them, and it is a moment for the country to see as they walked up those stairs where two weeks ago, uh, we all were, were live on the air here broadcasting the rioters breaching the steps. You, you, you notice who's not here, President Trump, uh, as we have talked about, who of course remains president until noon today. But look at who is here. We know that Vice President Mike Pence has arrived. We've seen a number of the president's allies here, Republicans, more than 50 of them by our team's count, who voted to object to the Electoral College count certifying President-elect Biden's win are expected to be in attendance today. One of my producers spotted Congressman Jim Jordan, for example, one of President Trump's closest allies, who is attending today, somebody who's been speculated to potentially be involved in his impeachment trial. That means something, these individuals' attendance here. Uh, and while Joe Biden does come into office uh, with many around the country, and frankly here in Washington, hoping for him to be able to make good on that promise of unification, he has some challenges ahead of him. Polling shows that most Americans, many Americans, are concerned about the uphill battle as it relates to unity, as it relates to progress. And the president-elect, we often talk about the first hundred days, he does not have that kind of luxury of time. He has, he is facing, this country is facing the crisis of public health and the pandemic, the economic crisis. He has two major bills, a $1.9 trillion economic relief bill, 
and a massive immigration bill that will be sent to Congress today by the end of this week. And he is going to need cooperation from the spectrum of people that you see here on stage, from you know Senator Bernie Sanders, who, who we saw a shot of a few moments ago on the left, to Senator Ted Cruz, House Republicans on the right, to be able to get some of what he wants to do through Congress. He's going to do a lot in the next three days as far as executive orders, a federal mask mandate, for example. He's going to reverse a series of executive actions that President Trump took in his early days in office and throughout his four years. But executive orders can only get you so far. And I believe we're taking a look as we talk about the president's allies and Senator Lindsey Graham here, somebody else who has been with the president even in his final days of office, flying with him on, a, on Air Force One, for example, on the president's last trips here. Joe Biden is going to need that help to create the kind of change that he wants to create, to get done what he wants to get done, because those actions that he can take just via the power of the presidency only get him so far as we look at what appears to be Steve Scalise, one of, of course, the Republican leaders uh, walking through the halls of Congress here. Uh, I am also struck, as we take a moment to reflect here, this, this area that we've seen, and you saw a shot of what's called the crypt, where those big pillars are, packed with those insurrectionists just two weeks ago chanting words like hang Mike Pence, chanting about wanting to find lawmakers in their offices and, and bring them, in their words, to justice. It is such a different scene today. And I think it's powerful, and one of the reasons why you saw the Biden team push so hard to make sure that despite all the security measures in place in Washington, and this is my third inauguration, and I'll tell you, it looks very different than all the rest, um, at least from, from our perspective, he is able to stand on the West Front and do this. Typically, it's one of the, the things we get to do is spot people, talk about who we see. It's a lot harder to do when everyone's wearing masks. That's another big change here. As they look out from the risers of the West Front, social distancing is in place for all of these chairs. Masks are virtually on every single person that I've seen so far. They are all but a requirement here. And that is a significant change to what we've seen. As you both know, typically you're packed like sardines here. It is another sign, as we saw last night with the president-elect's service there at the Lincoln Memorial, another sign that the backdrop to all this is not just the political disunity, the discord, the concern about where this country goes from that perspective. It's the pandemic, and that is the number one priority for President-elect Biden moving forward. Alex Jackson, thank you. Thank you so much, and we are joined by someone who has